that wall down. No, I'm, there will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. Why is the Biden administration building a border wall in Arizona? So um, we are not uh, we are not finishing the wall. Uh, we are cleaning up the mess the prior administration uh, left behind in their in their failed attempt uh, to build a wall. Okay, the Biden administration trying to defend authorizing funding to close multiple border wall gaps in the Yuma, Arizona sector of our southern border with Mexico. Despite what you heard there, the president's campaign trail promised not to build another foot. All right, so let's start there with the team tonight, the Green Team panel to break it down. Former State Department official David Teferi, Democratic strategist Kevin Walling, and Project 21 co-chair Horace Cooper. Gentlemen, great to have you all back with us tonight. Hey, Shannon. Thank you. Okay, so this is what the CBP chief, Raul Ortiz, tweeted today. He says, we're funded to close four border gaps in Yuma sector. Closing these gaps will help deter migrants from crossing in this dangerous area, which this fiscal year has accounted for 45,761 apprehensions and 45 water rescues. And Horace, one of our um, guests we've had on uh, this week said there have been a lot of deaths. This is a dangerous trek that people go on coming here. Um, so the wall closing... Whatever you want to call it, this administration says now's the time for that. See, this administration, instead of just agreeing to do the right thing because it's the right thing, the wall is a good idea and it saves lives. But instead, we have to redefine. We're not rebuilding the wall, we're saving lives. Uh, inflation is just tentative. It's going to pass. It's transitory, except it's now on a 40-year high. It's not a recession. That's not the technical term for what's going on when, in fact, Americans are saying at levels we've not heard since the Jimmy Carter administration, it's a recession. It's terrible. This administration should stop playing the word games. All right, so let's take it to Kevin, our Democratic strategist here. Um, Congressman Andrew Clyde, he's a Republican from Georgia, tweets this. After Hispanic support for President Biden craters to 26% approval, he suddenly wants to complete the border wall. Kevin. Well, Shannon, I really don't think there's politics involved. As you rightly point out, so many lives have been lost, including the life of a five-year-old girl mm -hmm. who just drowned last month at that border crossing. So there's an appropriation of that money to, to fill in those gaps around Yuma, Arizona. We've got to take the politics out of this. This is actually about saving lives of these migrants so desperate to come to this country, including that little girl who got separated from her mom. So I, I want to put the politics aside if we can and actually do the right thing for the American people, which is, to Horace's point, build part of this wall back. And I'm a Democrat that believes in border yeah. security and increasing funding for uh, uh, patrol officers and, and border enhancements. Okay, so there have been many who have said this is a national security issue when we're talking about what goes on at the border. But I want to talk to another national security issue tonight, and that's dealing with China. So, David, you're our expert here on foreign policy on this panel. So let's talk through this. Um, the speaker, Nancy Pelosi, is heading out on an Asia trip, and there have been threats that possibly her plane could be shot out of the sky or should be by some, you know, crackpot in China if she should dare to go visit Taiwan. Now, here's former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, his tweet a couple days ago. He says, Nancy, Speaker Pelosi, Nancy, I'll go with you. I'm banned in China, but not freedom-loving Taiwan. See you there. So there are those on the right who say she should go. Now, The Hill has this headline today talking about former President Trump. It says he slams Pelosi's planned Taiwan visit. She will only make it worse. David, what do you think about her potential visit? This is such an interesting standoff. You know, the Speaker of the House has the right to go and visit Taiwan if she wants to. Uh, the Congress is a co-equal branch of government, and as the leader, one of the leaders in Congress, uh, it's important for her to go and visit our allies, and Taiwan is a democratic ally. Uh, China has actually probably made it more likely that she's going to go, because if she doesn't go now, people will think that she didn't go because China instructed her not to. And China has no right to be instructing any U.S. official, whether it be a congresswoman or someone in the Biden administration, not to go and visit Taiwan. And if we 
back down now, it, you know, ch what will China do the next time someone wants to visit Taiwan? Their response will be even stronger and more threatening. Uh, I do think China may take some provocative action. I think it's very unlikely that China would make the mistake of endangering uh, the Speaker of the House or doing anything to endanger her airline flight into Taiwan. Well, Kevin, what about this? Because there are Democrats and Republicans who are kind of flipping sides and finding alliances about how they feel about whether she should go or not. It's one of those weird Washington things where people are all over the place. It really is. There are interesting dynamics at play. Mike McCall, the Republican uh, ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, is cheering the speaker on for this visit. And we've got to remember, Speaker Pelosi has a long history uh, with Taiwan and the Chinese Communist regime. She was in Tiananmen Square protesting for uh, human rights, bringing the fight to China. So she believes strongly in this. I think she's also seeing potentially that this might be her last term as Speaker. I don't believe it as the Democrat on your panel, but I think this would be a serious capstone for her, who has believed so strongly in advocating for human rights that she's got to go and she's got to be present uh, in Taiwan. Yes, yeah, so the White House taking some heat from not having a more uh, clear message on this issue. Um, but another issue they got to deal with domestically is the economy. Um, Horace, you referenced this and, and this idea of changing uh, words and definitions and that kind of thing. Um, Politico, though, says this. Uh, this is an opinion piece. It says, wait, is Biden a better president than people thought? They're talking about this in the context of the economy and everything else. They say, following a pattern with long roots in his career, Biden is looking a little like the student who's failing his class for most of the semester, then pulls an all-nighter and slips the paper under the professor's door at 6 a.m. Turns out the paper is actually pretty good. There's no way he's getting an A for the term, but no fair grader would give him an F either. A solid B is within reach. Horace, you're great for the president. I used to teach constitutional law. I know of this experience or attempt <laughs> on the part of students, and they did not get a B. They did not get a C. Oh. They might have gotten a D. Class participation and what you do for the entirety of the term matter. This president, every time, he has touched a policy, whether it's energy, whether it's the economy, whether it's international relations, he has made it worse. And for him to think that there's some little clever thing that he can sort of cram in at the last minute, minute like this new deal that he's worked out with Manchin, I tell you, when you look at it and you grade it, you're going to give that an F. Nothing has improved. I'm going to have nightmares tonight, the ones I always have about law school, about showing up at the wrong place for my exam and everything else. Um, Horace, you would have been great. Very interesting, Professor, I have a feeling. Uh, David Horace and Kevin, thank you all. Come back soon. Thanks, Shannon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.